You've probably been told that medieval peasants were just like illiterate dunces who sat around eating turnips and farming all day. But in 1381, a group of peasants from Essex and Kent managed to storm London's castle and make political demands of the king himself. This is the story of the Peasants' Revolt. This topic's been chosen by my lovely backers on Patreon. If you'd like to join them, click the link in my bio. So on the throne is King Richard II, and he implements what's called a poll tax. A poll tax is the same amount of money for everybody, regardless of your income. A shilling is nothing for a baron or a lord, but it's a lot for a poor family. So in the southeast of the country, people start deciding not to pay. They demand an end to the poll tax, removal of certain unpopular officials they don't like, and an end to serfdom. Like, these are people who know their government's foreign policy and have opinions on it that are different to what they've been told by their lords. They have political theories. They demand no law in England except only those which they themselves move to be ordained. That's democracy! The American Founding Fathers are called revolutionary for thinking all men are created equal, but there were illiterate peasants in Essex doing this 400 years before. At Blackheath near Greenwich, a man called John Ball asks, when Adam delved and Eve span, who then was the gentleman? In other words, there were no lords and ladies in the Garden of Eden. They march on London to find the advisers that they don't like. A woman called Joanna Farrar leads an attack on the Savoy Palace and they burn it down. They storm the Tower of London, find the Archbishop of Canterbury inside, drag him out and chop his head off. So the King agrees to meet with them, um, and at first he like agrees to all their demands, even ending serfdom. But at the meeting, one of the rebel leaders, a guy called Watt Tyler, is murdered. And as soon as the king's safe, he goes back on all his promises. Hundreds of rebels are hanged, maybe as many as 1,500. And the government clamps down on revolutionary sentiment. But they don't dare put another poll tax in for 500 years. That's how much they were shaken up by the Peasants' Revolt.